I have a dream that next year we will be handing prizes for the best sustainable chef in the world. And within a few years, each chef will have sustainability priorities in the work that he does. Hi everyone. I will be talking today about sustainability in the hospitality industry. I will talk about what you can be doing and where sustainability meets you as chefs. But before we go deep into this, let's just talk, why do we even talk about sustainability? Why do we even bother about sustainability? And you know, with this big word, it's crucial, it's urgent, it's the biggest challenge of humanity. So what we see is we have one planet. And this planet is providing us all the resources that we need so we can live here. The air, the water, the soil, everything that will provide us the living, the food, and your own business. And when this planet is getting out of balance, then we're starting to see the problem. We are witnessing two opposing trends that are happening simultaneously all the time. One is a trend of decreasing, a decreasing resources of water, the availability of water and the quality of water. It's not only an issue if we have water or not, but it's also if the water are good enough in order to raise our food and grow it. Deforestation that is giving us the oxygen and the air to the world. The loss of biodiversity and the extinction of species, whether it's overfishing and the tuna or salmon that we see that are getting more rare, or the bees that are in charge of pollination and have a crucial role in our food system that are gone. Decrease of topsoil and erosion of land happening because we are using our land too much and trying to grow too much food on the same land. We see that every year 1% of our land is killed and overused because of erosion. At the same time, we see the second trend, which is the increase. The increase of human population. On the same one planet, we see that now we have 7.8 billion people on the same resources. And it's not only that, each one of us is consuming more. We want more water, we want more food, we need more automobiles for each one of us on our planet. So we need to have more infrastructures. We are consuming more and more. See what a person consumes in one week, how many packages, how many stuff that we are adding and adding and buying. We get more and more plastic in the oceans. You know that they say that in 2050, we'll have more plastic in the ocean than fish. And we see this plastic already, the microplastic in our food, in our salt, in our honey, in our water that we drink energy. We use more and more energy. We need more in order to provide and greenhouse gases, which are responsible for climate change, a huge threat on the world. And all of that in the end of the day makes more garbage. We have a lot of waste and waste doesn't disappear. We need to treat it and do something with it. So it's not just vanishing. And we're asking ourselves, is this quality of life? Are these people enjoying the quality of life that we as human society provide. So what we see is two opposing trends. On the one hand, we have a decreasing of water, fresh air, forestry, fishery, topsoil, landfills, and so on. And on the other hand, we have an increasing demand of population, consumption, greenhouse gases, pesticides, chemicals. And what happens if we have two opposing lines that are constantly moving towards one another? We will have a clash. Sustainability is about opening these walls. And let me use the metaphor of funnel, which you chefs know. It's about opening the walls to a sustainable society. It's not about restoration. It's not about going back. It's understanding that there are limits and boundaries to the ecological system, and we will live within these boundaries. In the end, we see that the social system and the ecological system are interlinked. And we as human society are living within the ecological system and within that our food system, which is a crucial system in the ecological system. Sustainability is not a trend. It's not a hippie or a tree hugger thing. It's about rethinking, about looking differently on the things, putting the eyeglasses and understanding that everything is connected and everything is within the same framework. It's about rethinking and opening new opportunities. And if there is something that COVID-19 has demonstrated us, 
is the fragility of human society and the fact that there are bigger powers and that we need a very strong and resilient food system that will continue to provide us this basic need. Sustainability should be employed on the whole food chain, on each fragment of it. And you chefs could do a lot about it. You could be real leaders and you also have the responsibility for it. So where does sustainability meet you chefs? On almost everything that you do. Let's give three examples of places where you will meet sustainability and spread also some of the ideas. I will not cover all of it, but I will try to give some examples of the solutions that you could be providing. We will be using some of the pictures from our events called MASA, in English, MASS, in which we had the premise of combining culinary, sustainability, and art. And in each one of them, we have some topic that is on the agenda. You will see that the base of all these events is stopping food waste, using ingredients that were about to go to the garbage, nothing from the garbage, only things that were about to be thrown but were perfectly nutritious and good to be eaten. And we worked with each one of them with different chefs in order to create a magnificent meal. So let's start with the basic thing, the menu. The menu is influenced on so many levels in sustainability. And the first thing is the choice that you make in the raw materials. When you choose the raw materials, whether it's for eating or the beverages, you are making a lot of decisions that are influenced. First, the raw material, is it abundant or scarce? The growing of this material, what did it create? Did it create a real pressure on the ecosystem, on the ecological one, or it's on regenerative methods? Do you even know the methods that it has been used? Did you ask your farmer or oh, your farmer is way off kilometers from where you live so you have no clue how it has been used? Is the thing that we are eating now providing us with the ability to be eating later with the same things? The responsible sourcing issue. Are we putting chemicals and pesticides that are not only making our food less healthy but is also making the farmers get these chemicals and pesticides and are also making the land be unavailable for future crops. Do we use sourcing that are more responsible in the way that they are grown? What about the seasons? We're so used that we can eat everything anytime, but if an apple was sitting for half a year in the refrigerator and we used so much energy on the cooling and we waited I don't know for the, about the nutritious value of it. Does it make sense? Why not use things on their seasons and appreciate the land and what the seasons had to give us during the times that it has and feel passion about the things that we don't have now because it's not the season and the right one. What about the cattle, the eggs? Did we think about all the hormones that we're putting? How were they grown? What are we putting inside our body when we eat it? Is it fair how we grow it? Did they have free range when they were grown? And of course, the issue of vegetarian or vegan, which is an issue to be considering and thinking about. But there's a variety of solutions that we can make sure that the source of these will be more responsible and more healthy. And the employees themselves, the workers, the farmers, the producers, do you know the conditions that they were working when they produced our food? Were they reasonable and fair? And when we think about our food, it would be amazing if we can grow our food on the garden or on the roof, or if we have the local farmer that we can talk with and see how our food is being grown. But today, most of our food is transported from all over the world. You know, sometimes it's a real absurd. We're transporting and exporting things that we have in our same country. Think about all the greenhouse gases, the air pollution, the infrastructure, buses, trucks, boats that needed in order to bring us this one lemon and travel it from all over the world. And when you think about it, how much time it deserved and the quality of this raw material till it got to our place. Did you know that 14% of food loss actually happens on this trip 
Maybe we can prevent it if we make things more locally. Another thing to consider is the packaging. If we want all this raw material to get and in good condition, we need to pack it well. What kind of packaging are we using? You know, there are those pictures that we see each lemon and lemon or each carrot that is packed on its own. Think about all the materials that are not renewable and could not be recycled afterwards or reused that we are packing in our food industry. Maybe locality could be one solution for that or really choosing best what we are packing and what not. The second element is how we use our products and how we display and hand them to the consumers. In the background, you'll see a video from our latest event, Massa 2020, in which we had the goal to use all the raw materials from nose to tail. So we have been using the leaves, the inflorescences, the stems of all the vegetables that we got, the herring of the fish, and we made a delicious meal out of it. Also, we incorporated 15 startups in the meal itself, in the dishes, in the display, in the packaging, in which we have shown the potential of future food to bring a lot of creativity, healthiness, nutritious, and less footprint in a sustainable manner. We even had edible glasses and bowls that we gave the food in it. There are many sustainability issues in the pre-cooking and in the way that you handle your raw materials. Think about the food waste, think about what you can be using, where the creativity you could put inside, and also in the display. How are you handing the food to your consumers? Do you give single plastic bottles? They will, by the way, be banned, so better not. Are you giving napkins? You know, in one of our projects, we saw that the napkins was one of the biggest waste that they had, which was so unnecessary, and they started to do a whole revolution in how they treat this little thing. The dishes that you're giving, everything around the display has an important role. And now we're reaching to the third point, and this is the whole surrounding, your restaurant, the building and your own restaurant. What kind of practices do you have? How much energy are you using on your refrigerators, on your cooking stoves, on your restaurant itself? How much water, how much greenhouse gases are you polluting? Which kind of restaurant do you have? Is it something that is contributing to the community? Has any connection to this place? and the space that you're living within. Many, many questions are related to the actual restaurant itself. These are a few of the challenges that you chefs will encounter in the perspective of sustainability. Now, what can you be doing? A lot. Let's take three things that you can be doing tomorrow morning. The first, stop food waste. Food waste is such a scandal. We are wasting 1.3 million tons of food every day. I don't think it's even a magnitude that we can imagine. It's 4.3 billion tons of food each year. It's a lot of food that is going to the garbage and it's such a stupidity of human society. We need to stop it. It doesn't value our food and doesn't value our human society. There are many steps that could be done in order to stop food waste.
Now, if you're thinking that you are one of those kinds that are not wasting food, so please, please remember my words, everyone is wasting food. In all of our projects, we entered with the belief of our consumers that they're not wasting, and we saw that the gap between what they thought that they're throwing and the reality was huge. So please monitor and check what are you wasting. There are many steps that could be done from the procurement and how we are using the food itself and how we are displaying it to our consumers. Many solutions that are already available. Look at these wonderful vegetables and fruits. I love them. They are called inglorious, imperfect. I think they are the most perfect because in nature, things need to be growing differently. When I see an apple that is really shining and looks totally identical to its brother, this is where I suspect. So please, I became a fanat for them. Adopt them, look for them. You know that 20% of the produce is being thrown because it's imperfect looking. Find them, use them, cook them, display them. The second thing is upcycling. Look at what are your leftovers and see if you can use your leftovers for another process of yourself or maybe for a process of other business in your community. In one of our projects in the Galil Winery, we saw that within two weeks, they took all their leftovers from the grape leaves and they used it in order to create a magnificent pesto. And it was just under their nose. And remember, humans have created this thing called waste. In nature, there is no waste. The waste of one species is the food of another species. The third thing is creativity. You chefs, you're so creative. Try and find solutions for the leftovers. And remember, saving is a good option and bringing people that need this food, but this should be the last option. Try to find upstream solution as much as possible. Let's love food, not waste. The second thing you could do tomorrow morning is talk with your supply chain. Give them a call, ask them, how are you producing your things? What are you putting inside? How are your employees? Start discussing things with them. You'll see two things. One, they might give you good answers. If not, you can actually demand it from them and ask them to change so you will get a better quality product. And if not, you can also always replace can try and build your own. You can try and find new local farmers that need this work, but make sure you understand your supply chain and understand that you have a lot of power in this discussion, which is an ongoing one. The third thing you can be doing tomorrow morning is being creative and thinking about how you could involve the solutions of sustainability. You chefs, you are wonderful in working with restrictions. Look at the sustainability as an opportunity. And as they say, the times they are changing, yes, they are changing. The consumers are looking for things which are different. It's not the same as 20 years ago. Legislation is on our back. If it is the banning of single-use plastic, whether it's carbon that is going to be legislated and you'll need to pay money, don't wait for legislation. Don't wait for the consumers to change the norms. Be a leader, change in advance, and put new norms, and you'll see that the creativity is endless. And be generous to food tech and startups that you can involve within your own practices, and you'll see how much fun and tasty it could be. And if you're taking the full scope of sustainability and really tackling the challenge and you decide that you'll be a net zero restaurant with no waste, with no energy, no water, no carbon, if you want to be a decarbonized restaurant, a positive energy, circular economy, or even to open a playground for children that is fully powered with the waste that you generated from your own methane from your restaurant, please give me a call. I would love to hear, visit, give an advice. Thank you very much.